This is my bird garden, my happy place. I try to come out here in the morning when I have coffee or if you're feeling a little down or even just because. I have slow, oh, look in the corner, look in the corner. That is a Wilson Warbler in the left-hand corner. You rarely see them. I have never seen them go into a bowl like that. So that was the first, but we'll see them again soon. I am so excited that I put this together with an old gazebo that Gary found in the trash. And though we did put it up in the garden, it's not put up the way it was supposed to be put up. It was basically put up as a shelter for birds, small birds. The way we designed it, see that's the corners of the gazebo. The way it was designed with the cross beams across it, those are just Brazilian pepper tree branches. Gary did some trimming and I grabbed all those and I put them up. And right now they're only up there with yarn and string and zip ties, but I'm gonna go through and hardwire it in. A hawk cannot swoop down. And occasionally before, you would see the occasional hawk come through and swoop in. They need to swoop and pick up when they pick up something. But if they can't swoop, well, then they can't catch anything. And since we set this up like that and I put all that up there, I have not seen a single hawk come in here. Now, this area of my garden, I call the bird garden, where I've got all the tree colors and kale and all kinds of stuff growing, food. Started to bring in a lot of birds because I brought in water. You kind of need three things. I would say a little bit more, but let's start with three things. The first thing that's gonna bring in birds is water. The second thing that's gonna bring in birds is brush. See all the, all those low plants around are brush and something they can dart into quick if they felt uncomfortable. The third thing is really trees. They wanna be able to come by, land in a tree, look down and, and check places out. If they don't have that and they're not comfortable with an area, then you may not see that many birds. So we've got the three major things. Now, running water does tend to bring in more birds. It just works that way. They can hear it. They can hear it as they fly by. They know it's there and that brings them. Though, as you saw the Wilson Warbler before, a bowl of water was fine, but of course he had to find the garden. I say the next thing we need is food. Now, generally they're gonna find food in brush. Isn't this cute? I just love this. So, it's whatever, you know, makes them comfortable. Well, remember, water's life. They absolutely need water. So that's the major thing. And then with the hedges, the brush, and then the trees, it's basically perfect, this garden. And it's gotta be because I did a video, I think it's almost two years old now, on 50 small species of birds that come into this area. And there's more now. There's more than after I did the video than there was. So we're getting close to 60. That's a hummingbird taking a bath on my ball fountain. Now that one's electric. I bought that at a thrift store for like 15, $16 on my birthday many years ago. I walked in, they had just taken it off the truck and I said, I'll take it, I'll take it. I didn't even know if it worked. That can be converted to solar, which I did for a while when the pump broke. But since I've got two outlets out there, set up for two electric pumps. I went ahead and bought another pump and we changed it back to electric. So this way, even on a cloudy day, rainy day, they still have that one going since it's basically their favorite. And I have replicated that, making my own cement ball. But the, it's the idea that they can have the water run over them. I mean, look how tiny hummingbirds are. They want the water to run over them. Now that's a house finch and that's a male. A male house finch. I see some birds in the background as, as well. The hummingbirds right now that are coming in, I'm. it's so hard to tell. I'm not exactly sure if that's a young Anna's, but the other one was a Rufus. Now that one with the fish and the frogs, I bought that one at the same thrift store, and I think I paid 20 or $25 for that, and that one's electric. All the rest of them are solar. Now today it's kind of a cloudy day, so a lot of them are not running. But see here I've got food out. 
Now, when I first started this garden, I did not have any flowers. I strictly went with vegetable plants. And then I started thinking, well, why not add in some flowers for looks? But what it also did was bring in more birds and other insects for pollinating. And that really did help. So I grew my yellow zinnias that you saw. And now they just throw seeds down or I pick the, the brown flowers off. I let them go ahead and die on the plant, do the whole thing. I make sure the seeds become ripe because if you pick them when they're yellow like this, you won't get the seeds. And then I spread them around. It started with one plant. Isn't this cool? Look at all the birds. Even today, oh, look at that. That's a spotted toey in the electric fountain to the right. Oh, I moved over a little bit. That is a spotted toy. They are so shy, but they've actually become used to me. So I can sit out here with my cell phone like I'm doing now, and I can get really good footage of them. They are absolutely beautiful. You know, about 10 years ago, we started to see them. We didn't even know they were here, and Gary would get so excited. But if they saw us, they left, and then they didn't come back. Now they don't care. They've had so many babies here that they are used to me. I can be working in the yard. They'll come down. Aren't they gorgeous? That rich black head. Look at that. And the brown, beautiful brown underneath, the reddish brown. Now what's up in the bushes above them, there's goldfinches and I think there's a house finch back there. The house finches, they're brown. The females are brown and the males, when they're colored up, have the red front. And then the goldfinches, we've got a ton of them now. Oh, that's a goldfinch. He took off. They they just love all the fountains. If all the fountains were going, I'll come back and you'll see it another time. You'd see them all over the place. They tend to come in a lot early in the morning and then during the day they forage and then off and on all afternoon they come in in small numbers, but they're really busy. That's our male goldfinch. See how beautiful and yellow they are? That's a lesser goldfinch. That's what we have here. And then above them is a house finch. So we have quite a few birds, even just now, coming in. You can actually see some of the pollinators flying around. This is just so cool. And then those light bulbs you might be seeing on the top, they're kind of swinging there. Those are just solar light bulbs. I got those at the dollar store. They used to be a dollar, and now they're like two and three dollars. But they're really cool. Look at all the birds. Now I have multiple bowls in there and I'm trying to keep all seed bowls inside this gazebo with the zigzag top because this way they're safe. Nothing is going to come in there and bother them. It's kind of a safe haven for them. Even the hummingbirds, you know, when they come and take a bath, there's a little rufus on the ball. The other birds aren't bothering them. They might be intimidated by their size, but nobody's bothering anybody. I think the biggest ones that push everybody around are the rufus pushing around the rufus, and that is a little rufus there taking a bath. They just love the bowl because they can hang on to the side. So this way the water runs over them and they don't have any fear of drowning. I mean, if they went into one, something too deep, you know, something could happen, yet I've never seen it happen, but it could happen. So they prefer to have water run over them. I'm starting to get a little sunlight here. So you see some of the other ones starting to throw some water now up in the air. But we're still under cloud. I have a lot of solar fountains I make. And that's what I love doing. That's the house vent. Took off. I think everybody should make a little happy place. It's, it's good for your plants. It's good for the birds. It's probably better than meditating. Oh, the hummingbird wants to take a bath on top of the fish. Look at that. No, nope, he says I have to go somewhere else because the goldfinch is on top. Isn't this cool? Now in the back there, that's the fountain I make with a cup and a glass bowl. I'll tell you something. You're better off to get something solid color, not glass, because glass kind of gets yellow and it doesn't look as nice really quick. Buckets are good. There's all different ways of making these fountains. I love making solar fountains. 
the birds that have been coming in here now are, like I said, goldfinches. You saw the spotted towhee. The house finches, both male and female. That's, again, the male. See, he's reddish. And they get deeper as breeding season comes in the spring. And then the young males will have, like, flecks of red or orange until they color up. But that, that's a semi-young male. And that's a female. See, there's no red on that. That's a female. And how many birds want to take a bath? I just like sitting out here watching. You never know what's going to come in. There's been so many unusual birds. And the hummingbird just loves solar fountains. If you've got a fountain and you're not getting the birds, I'm going to say there, there probably isn't enough shelter around for them to feel safe. Put some big potted plants around and a few small ones. Think about where they would land. They need to come in and land and feel safe and then be able to check something out. They're not going to just dive in the water. They need to come look at it, see if it looks good. And if it looks safe for them, then they'll dive in. And we also have the white crowns showing up. I'm looking to see, oh, look at that little goldfinch taking a bath. The white crowns disappear all summer. They don't breed here. They disappear late in the spring, so they breed somewhere else. They look like the house finches, but they have a black and white on their head. And then they come back just at the start of fall. They're done, the babies come in. The babies don't have the black and white stripes. They have brown stripes, brown and tan. So they are, they're coming back now. Now the Orioles, they're leaving. And what you'll see even here, the occasional young Oriole, but only seeing young ones now, they'll come in, take a drink, and I think they're on their way south. So they go south for the winter. They don't tend to stay here. The hummingbirds stay here. Now the songbirds are coming in. We have a lot of different songbirds and warblers. They're coming in. You'll see them if you look around. You'll see them come in. but they are coming in now for the winter because there's plenty of food. They eat insects and a lot of these birds eat seeds off of the plants we grow. Because it's all day, isn't that cute? So like I said, we've got close to 60 small species of birds. The reason I say small is I'm not counting hawks or owls. I don't even count the ravens. We don't have any more crows. The ravens have gotten rid of all the crows. They drove them off. But I so really enjoy watching all these little birds come in. Now we also have what you could see right here are the spice finches. Now they're not native to California. Years ago, they were escaped pets. But you know, they don't cause any damage. They only eat tiny little seeds. And they do really good. Look at that. That is a young Oriole. He's just passing through right now, he or she. That's what it looks like. I'm trying to see. And it's taking a drink on my glass bowl up there. That's a solar fountain as well. All that is is a, a bowl with some rocks. But I think this one's thinking about taking a bath. They're just passing through. They're going to be all gone within the next week or two. But this is just like the most beautiful place to go sit. And I so enjoy watching the spice finches come in. They bring their babies too, which is a lot of fun when they have their babies. they I don't know where they're nesting, but they bring their babies here and they teach them how to eat. And they also foster pintail white is, but that's another story. So I wanted to share this with you today and kind of give you ideas on how to set it up like a bird garden. I hope to have this whole thing changed, a beautiful transformation all through fall and winter. I'm gonna add in more flowers I am going to trim some of the plants back. A lot of the stuff you see is edible food. It's collard, it's kale, it's walking onions, and there's a fig tree back there, which is going to lose all its leaves. But I want to add in a whole lot more, and I want to kind of swap out some of the solar fountains for something more fun and make it look pretty. And then I want to also kind of tidy up the solar fountain, see the wires? The wires that go to the panel? I wanna tidy those up. That's a spice finch going in. They just love seed. I put out pet food grade. I go to the pet store and we get sunflower seed, 
we get a budgie mix or a parakeet mix, and then I also buy a finch mix. And I think the spice finches really like the finch mix. So I hope you enjoyed this. I figured I would just sit out here and take my cell phone out and just watch them all over. And you can see all the different birds drinking in all the different fountains. I think that's a little song sparrow on the top. No, it's a warbler on the top, I believe. In, well, it just took off and now here comes the house finch. You've seen quite a few birds if you've been watching this. All different types. The different toeys, house finches, white crowns. They've all been coming through the gold finches. And just think, years ago, when Gary and I first got together, we didn't even have gold finches out here to see. And then all of a sudden there was one and now there's literally hundreds and they do nest here. And they have quite a few babies and quite a few nests. So we've got a ton of goldfinches. They're called lesser goldfinches, along with hundreds and thousands of hummingbirds. So I hope you enjoyed this. I did. And I try to do this every day, but it seems like I'm spending more time doing other things and working and gardening than just kicking back and enjoying nature, which is so relaxing. I don't think there's anything more fun than this. So I hope to get in some more flowers and more little ornaments in there. My daughter bought me some solar kits of lights that are in there. You can't tell now, but they light up at night. I like solar lights electricity. You just hang it and then at night you get the twinkle in the garden as you walk through. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, that's walking onions in the front there. And the birds just love walking around and looking. And you know, if you have solar fountains, it doesn't hurt to have a bowl of water too. Because sometimes all they want is a bowl of water. I love my solar fountains. So I hope you enjoyed this. And back there is some collard growing. It grows so big. That's a spotted toey again coming down to the fountain. Oh, he's going to dart behind all the geraniums. Oh, little goldfinch female. Is this cute? Put some plants out so they can nibble on them. They love sow thistle. And they also like purslane, the seeds that are coming out of the purslane. And basil, they basil. Oh, there's a balsam warbler told you he was going to come back. I think it's a young one because they get a really deep dark black spot on their head during breeding season. Aren't they gorgeous? Look at the coloring. Look at the coloring. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. Look at that. Well, off he went. Hope you enjoyed this. At least we got to see him at the end. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. I love this.